Let's face it, motorcycles aren't just vehicles for getting you places. A used Hyundai Accent will do that while carrying more stuff and in greater comfort than any two-wheeler. However, the Accent is missing some of the crucial features of motorcycles. It doesn't lean in turns, it doesn't have the otherworldly performance of some of the faster bikes, and it doesn't have that raw look, feel and sound that we're used to from our two-wheeled steeds. Yes, there is a visceral reaction we have to machines, especially the ones that remind us of a simpler time when we were younger and had fewer responsibilities and worries. A while back I made a video about why we're so attracted to retro motorcycles. Check it out in the top right corner. But the fact is that a significant portion of motorcycle riders seriously like riding bikes that look like something their grandfathers would have ridden. Maybe they want to relive their childhood, or feel like they can afford something they couldn't in their youth or just go back to a time when both life and machines were simpler. That's why a lot of these bikes are air-cooled, don't have a lot of fancy bodywork and are easy to work on. And manufacturers are more than happy to sell us those feelings by building motorcycles that resemble these old-time machines. What with the exposed motors, steel parts and beautiful proportions. And we're more than happy to pay. Some of these bikes are thoroughly modern with the latest tech and performance, but with the old-school styling cues. Others are actually pretty close to the originals in their simplicity, sound and feel. But which are the best retro machines sold these days? That's what we're here to find out, so settle in and smack those like and subscribe buttons to help the channel grow. There are several qualities that make a bike retro, but the biggest one is looks followed closely by sound. These two things make up the visceral appeal of a retro motorcycle. This however does not mean that retro looking bikes have to lag behind in utility and performance. So when examining them we'll focus on three main categories. Motorcycles that look the most old school, motorcycles that have a classic look but modern performance, and retro motorcycles that are very effective at performing a function. Speaking of performing, I couldn't get through this video without pointing out that a part of those retro looks is an air-cooled engine. This was the only type of engine available to manufacturers in the olden days and riders have come to associate air-cooled with classic. The greater simplicity of these engines leaves space around them that is not filled with radiators and all kinds of lines, and being able to look through a motor is generally considered desirable in a retro bike. Of course, liquid cooling gives engines more power, greater reliability and makes them more efficient, forcing many manufacturers, even ones with iconic air-cooled motors like Moto Guzzi and BMW, to go to liquid cooling. So while it isn't a law that retro bikes need to be air-cooled, it is an asset. So what are the coolest looking retro motorcycles? Well, that depends on what school of retro you come from. First you have your American-style cruiser retro, exemplified by Harley-Davidson and Indian. Of this type of motorcycle, the ones that stand out to me as being the most classic looking are the Indian Chiefs, Harley Softtails and a couple of the older Sportster models. The Chiefs have air-cooled motors with that beautifully shaped frame, no radiator and just the right proportions. If you like the fat wheel look, you have the Bobber and Super Chiefs, and if you prefer a 19 inch thinner front wheel, the two regular Chiefs will tickle your fancy. On the Harley side, you get the classic looks plus impressive attention to detail when you're up close. Both the Softail and Sportster lines include thin and fat wheeled options, air-cooled motors and a sound that no other bike can imitate. My favorite looking Softail is the Street Bob 114 with its chopper profile, and the best looking remaining Sportster is the 48, although the Iron 883 is a very good looking and sounding, if not performing, motorcycle. Other manufacturers also build some nice cruisers, with one example being the Triumph Bonneville Bobber, but it's hard to compete with Harley and Indian in this space. One space where Triumph has no trouble competing is the British retro scene. These are classic looking bikes patterned after the older Triumphs, BSAs and Royal Enfields of the 40s, 50s and 60s. Of course Triumph is the leader here with their most classic looking bike, the Bonneville T100. One of the few clues that this bike is not 60 years old is the radiator, but otherwise from a distance it could be mistaken for your granddad's ride. BSA has recently been revived in India and come out with its Gold Star 650 which also looks pretty legit. However, I have to say that Royal Enfield's Interceptor 650 is the closest to the original bikes of the time. The engine is air-cooled and the whole bike has that simple charm of a machine stripped down to its bare necessities. 
It's reasonably priced and sounds great with the SNS accessory slip-ons. I've ridden these bikes and they have a charm that belies the modest power numbers and average, at least by today's standards, handling. Sometimes you just want to get there in style, feeling like you're in a simpler time, and that's when bikes like this start to make sense. But if you want to go real old school, I'm talking about the 20s or the 30s, then your only choices are niche builders like Janus Motorcycles out of Indiana. Because when you look at a bike like the Halcyon 450, well, you're surprised that it's riding on a paved road. When bikes with that shape, leading link forks, springer seats and fishtail exhausts were regularly seen on the roads, pavement was the exception, not the norm. I could see myself someday riding one of these cross country, picking the gravel roads whenever possible just for the hell of it. Now if you want to go fast and corner hard, the air-cooled single-cylinder Halcyon 450 is not your ride. For that, you need one of the performance retros, and this is where we go to Japan. Another type of classic motorcycle is the UJM, Universal Japanese Motorcycle, generally characterized by an air-cooled inline 4 a la Honda CB750. These days, the air-cooled 4s are gone, and the closest retro bike you'll see to the original UJM is the Kawasaki Z900 RS in regular and cafe versions. This four-cylinder retro bike, based on the styling of the Z1 and the KZ1000 Eddie Lawson replica, produces plenty of power and torque and can give a modern naked bike a run for its money. Kawasaki also recently released the best-looking modern classic UJM, the Parallel Twin Z650RS, a light, flickable, beautifully styled middleweight based on the look of the Z650B1. This bike competes with Yamaha's 689cc parallel twin, the XSR700, which combines the fun of the MT-07 with more traditional looks. However, my choice for the best retro UJM would be the XSR700's big brother, the XSR900, which just got an update in the engine, electronics and looks departments. In addition to beautiful styling, this bike rocks the 890cc 3-cylinder engine of the MT-09. I tested the MT-09 for a week last summer, video in the top right corner, and believe me, that triple absolutely rocks. In the XSR900, you get cool looks with the very modern performance of the MT-09. But what about function, you ask? Modern motorcycles do what they do so well that it's hard for the retros to compete. And while function follows form with a lot of retro bikes, there are exceptions. A Harley Road King looks very much like an FLH Electroglide of yesteryear, yet is also a very comfortable and capable long-distance tour. You could cross a continent on this bike, and when you get to your destination, park it in front of a cafe and admire its beauty. Want to go adventure touring? Yes, there are a lot of very capable adventure motorcycles out there that can handle themselves off-road. But so can the Triumph Scrambler 1200XC and the Ducati Scrambler Desert Sled. In fact, a guy named Henry Crew rode a desert sled around the world, a trip that covered 55,000 miles over some seriously challenging terrain. These two scramblers may look like styling exercises, but slap a windshield and some bags on them and suddenly you've got a couple of pretty capable adventure bikes. So what's the takeaway from all this? That you can have your cake and eat it too. You can pose at the cafe with any of these bikes, but when it comes to it, you can also cruise, tour, sport ride or bump around off-road. There was a time when there were no sport, naked, adventure or bagger motorcycles. There were just motorcycles, and these babies harken back to those days. I for one am a fan of the cool looks. There's something about motorcycles that look like motorcycles that appeals to me. Does it appeal to you too? What bikes did I leave out? I'm sure there are plenty of good ones. Please let me know in the comments and enjoy the upcoming riding season. Here in Canada, the snow is melting and it won't be long till we're out in the wind once again. Ride safe everyone. If you're interested in any of the gear that Brooke and I wear or use, or the camera equipment we use to film this channel, the links are below. Everything listed there was bought with our own money and we are not sponsored by any company. However, the links below are affiliate links and the channel is paid a small amount for referring you to shop at no additional cost to you. We do not recommend any products that we are not satisfied with ourselves, but we do strongly urge you to do your research and select the correct size for items like helmets and clothing. As always, thanks for watching, your support is greatly appreciated. Please hit that subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And whatever you ride, enjoy it. Wave at other bikers no matter what they're riding, we're all part of a brotherhood and sisterhood. Keep the rubber side down, shiny side up and may the spokes be with you.